so much for that deal. That's the truth. God is so good, isn't he? Yes, he is. You know, we're thankful for everything that God does. Our church is growing a little bit. This is a time of year when most churches are not doing that good for football season, but I'm thankful that you're coming. And you know, you encourage people to come because that's how we keep sustaining ourselves in Christ. Thank you, Lord. you know, we're always asking God for something, but you have to sustain your relationship with Him. And His church is the vehicle to do that. Come on, sir. Do not forsake the fellowship of the believers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need you to be here. Hallelujah. Yes. The more of us here, the more He moves. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 I want to thank uh, Joanne for taking up the Leon today. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah. Lucinda, and we're thankful you, that we keep going and keep pushing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want you to bow your heads right now and pray. Father, we thank you for your son Jesus. There is none like you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you are such a great God. Yes. Today is the day the Lord has made. Yes. We shall rejoice yes. and be glad in it. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And we walk by faith and not by sight. Oh God, we drive out every evil thought and every evil hindering spirit right now in Jesus' name. We pray for a revival that you've already begun in our hearts. A revival that would touch the nations of the world is already beginning in us. And Lord, we believe it. Set a fire in our hearts for Jesus. We have a passion for revival. Lord God, I pray too for our family, our church family, and our, all our family and friends, Lord. We lift them up quietly, yes. Father, in our hearts. Lift the people you've been praying for. <clears throat> we continue to pray for Dayton, and we pray, Father, for Hezekiah. We pray, Father, that you touch Ms. Lindora and Ms. Uh, Mr. McGuffey. All of them pray for Ms. Adam Amos, Dennis. And I pray for the voice, Lord, yes. that you heal. Yes. We pray for him, and we pray, Father, oh God, for Trevor. We pray for Brother James. We pray for Carl and Amelia. Yes. Mr. Victor, Lord, touch him and strengthen him. Oh God, Ms. Baptiste, touch her, touch her. Yes. Strengthen her. Brother Daniel, Father, touch him. Yes. And God, we pray, oh God, you touch Leon. We pray you touch all the members of this church. We pray for Dayton, Lord. And God, <laughs> we got so much to pray for, but we lift it all up to you. Yes. And God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. That he would move in a mighty way, Lord. I pray, Father, that no man is exalted. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't that good to know? You know, the most wonderful thing in the world is that we have the privilege of worshiping and serving him. We have to look at worship as a privilege. These people work hard to present you the Worship, we want you to see it as a privilege to receive it. Hallelujah. Amen. And stay strong in the Lord and yes. pray for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I want you to turn with me to scriptures that I very seldom go to, but in Leviticus, while you turn into Leviticus, we're going to begin to set the groundwork for our message. And I want you to think about this message with your whole heart. We have been dabbling around it every time we have a word from God. We are often leading toward this message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> you know, uh, sometimes, you know, every message we have, I hope you know, when that word goes forward, it goes forward for a heart that is pure with God. That you don't feel a hindrance to receiving his word because your heart is right with God. You know, God is about a heart thing. Yes, he's not about a mind thing. He's about a heart thing. And so one of the things God wants us to know is that you are forgiven. In our communion service Thursday, that's the word that came up very powerful. Forgiven. That's it. Just forgiven. We don't deserve anything. We just offer given. You don't need anything. You just forgive it. You don't owe God anything. You're just forgiven. And you need to walk in the forgiveness of God. No, that word forgiveness means to give up resentment. Give up resentment. Mm -hmm. Don't resent somebody that you feel have been forgiven. Don't you resent yourself. Don't resent God. God's not going to resent you. Why? Because we give that up when we're forgiven. Yes, sir. You give up resentment. 
And it also means pardon. You know, somebody has forgiven. They've been pardoned by the governor for something. They get out of jail or they get out of prison, right? You've been pardoned. Hallelujah. Absolved. That means it's been washed. It's been taken away. You've been absolved. There's no penalty against you anymore. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you get that word forgiveness down in your heart? There's no penalty anymore. You've been absolved of the consequences when you've been forgiven. And then it says grant relief from pain. You know, when you, when you do something wrong, there's a debt to be paid. People don't pay that debt. Christ paid that debt. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And nobody can take away the blood of Jesus from your forgiveness. The debt has been paid. The price is his to pay. No, you owe no man nothing but love because yes. God has forgiven you. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And nobody can walk better in forgiveness than someone who's a true believer. And I tell you, I can. But I can't by my, can't by my own strength. I have to believe in what he did on the cross. Because yes. yes, if you try to justify yourself, you'll never be forgiven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the reason why I want you to know forgiveness. There are three sections of commands I want to give you while you turn to Leviticus chapter 4. But I want you to remember the Bible starts with Genesis, doesn't it? And man fell. And as soon as we talk about how man fell, remember God did some patchwork and gave man a covering and sent him out because he was disobedient. See, the Lord, even though they fell and they should have died, because the scripture clearly says, if you eat the fruit of that tree, you're going to surely die. But God covered them. He's so merciful. So every time he does something, every time he gives you a rule to obey, he always got a plan to deliver you. Yes. Now, what kind of mercy for God is that? Yes. He knew you were going to fall, so he had a plan of mercy. He knew you were going to make the mistakes you made. He had a plan of mercy. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He always put a plan of mercy in place. And see, and when they fell, he, he himself covered them, not with fig leaves like they did. He covered them with animal skin, hallelujah. Because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. So God knew they needed blood in order to leave that garden and be out there because there was something looking to kill, steal, and destroy. Hallelujah. You don't want to be out there unless you feel forgiven or the blood has washed you, hallelujah. And the second time, God gave man the law. In the wilderness, when Moses was out there, he gave him the law. And he said, this is what you should not do. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. But the law was designed mostly to tell us we can't do it without God. But all that law, I mean, it's, so, it's not just the Ten Commandments. It's all kinds of laws, right? But God, at the same time, told him to build a tabernacle in the wilderness. And in the tabernacle was the mercy seat. The same God that gave them the law gave them the mercy seat. He always put the plan of redemption, of forgiveness in place. It's too bad we don't do what he does. Because we're supposed to be like him and forgive, don't we? But listen how beautiful that is. He takes them out there, giving them the Ten Commandments. They're cutting up and doing the wrong things. But he, he still gave him the commandments. Even when they broke it up and did all this, Moses got so mad, he brought him back up, gave it to him again, and he told him exactly how to build the tabernacle. And the mercy seat was inside yes, sir. the Holy of Holies. Come on, sir. Because he knew you couldn't hold to the law. So he built the tabernacle for his presence and said, you know what? With the blood atonement of animals, I will atone for your sins. Even when you break the law, I have a mercy seat. Yes, the Lord believes in forgiveness. It is very big to have. He prefers mercy over, over, over sacrifice. He, prefer, he prefers grace and favor for man. Come on, sir. He doesn't want to condemn you. He's not judging you with every step you make. No. God wants you to know you're forgiven. Yes, sir. Give up resentment. He, he doesn't resent you. He loves you. Yes. You've been pardoned. You've been absolved. You no longer owe a payment or a debt. Say, I don't owe a payment. Oh. I don't have no debt. Yes. Now, now, we ain't talking about that other debt. <laughs> We're talking about that debt that you owe God anything. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he sent his son to pay it for you. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be nice if Bill Gates would send his son to pay all your bills? Yes. 
God sent his son to pay the full debt for all of us. Yes, Say, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. I want you to know what it means. A price has been paid for your guilt, for your punishment. You don't owe no man nothing besides that. Walk freely in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want you to see in Leviticus that even though Leviticus talks about the law, it also talks about uh, unintentional sin. And that sin is sin that you didn't mean to commit. You didn't just say, okay, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go steal from this store because I know God will forgive me. No, that's intentional sin. There ain't no plan of forgiveness for those kind of things, is it? But there is forgiveness even in the Old Testament. God had a plan to atone for sins when they were unintentional. Come on, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He knew man was sin, so he knew he would fall. And look, in Leviticus 4, I want you to just bear with me for a few scriptures in Leviticus. Verse 1, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, When anyone sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, if the anointed priest sins bringing guilt on the people, he must bring to the Lord a young bull without defect as a sin offering for the sin he has committed. Yes. He is to present the bull at the entrance of the tent of the meeting before the Lord. He is to lay his hand on its head and slaughter it before the Lord. Then the anointed priest shall take some of the bull's blood and carry it into the tent of meeting. That's the tabernacle. He is to dip his finger into the blood and sprinkle some of it seven times before the Lord in front of the curtain of the sanctuary. Listen. Listen how wonderful that is. On the one hand, he's telling you, you defile the temple. You defile the law. But yet he's giving you a plan of mercy. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you go out there and you find your bull and you slaughter it. And he said, now you do this and you do this for complete time, seven times. I want you to put your finger in the blood and atone for the sin that you have committed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord had a plan even in the Old Testament. If you look down with me at verse 13 of chapter 4. He goes over and over again. I just want to get you a flavor. That atonement didn't just begin with Christ. The seed of atonement was already in the tabernacle. God was already forgiving man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was always in the forgiving business. Even before the law was presented, he was forgiving man. Hallelujah. Yes. He had a plan to raise up Noah just to save mankind. He had a plan to bring animal skin to cover Adam and Eve because of mercy. They disobeyed him. They should have died. But no, God had a plan of mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He had a law, and it was a hard law. Everything almost in it was about death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Yes, sir. So we know that the law had no mercy on you. Come on, Jesus, man. But the law put a tabernacle for his presence in the wilderness yes, with a mercy seat. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. To atone for your sins. Hallelujah. Yes, he always had a plan for mercy. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He always had a plan for mercy. I don't know why we think of God in judgment sense all the time. You ought to think of a loving God who has mercy on you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Verse 13. Listen, you got to get it down because we don't have no power because we're always keeping each other in bondage. We think we're not free of, uh, of God has not forgiven you. You know, and people keep reminding you you're not. But it's time for you to walk in the victory of forgiveness. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to walk in it. You have to believe you are. Even if you see the very thing that makes you feel like sin every day, I want you to say, I've been forgiven. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you got a child that reminds you of your sins, say, I've been forgiven. Yes. Hallelujah. If you Hallelujah. look down the street and you see somebody, you need to say, I've been forgiven. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to walk in that so you can have power over the enemy. Because if he, if he gets you through the back door, he will drag you down. My, my, my. He knows how to accuse the brethren and keep him feeling unworthy. But God has given you the victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, he says, if, verse 13, if the whole Israelite community sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's command, even though the community is unaware of the matter, they are guilty. When they become aware of the sin they committed, the assembly must bring a young bull as a sin offering and present it before the tent of the meeting. 
Listen, in that another word, way. He said, if the whole community is sin, even if they ain't aware of it, they still guilty. But I've still got mercy for them. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I still have a plan for them to bring the assembly before the tabernacle where the mercy seat is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, and I, I have a plan that you can keep reading in Leviticus. We can go on and on. We'll teach on it next week. But I want you to know over and over again, the same books that start talking about the law and how you're going to be beaten and punished and killed for breaking the law has atonement in it. Has a mercy seat yes, in it. Sir. Yes, sir. God has always had a plan for mercy. Yes. Do y'all believe that? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of y'all ain't gave yourselves mercy for things that happened 20 years ago. But God has. Come on, sir. That God has, God has. I, am, I am, forgiven. forgiven. Now, I tell you one thing. People play on your guilt to hell freezes over. Yeah. They give what they want. But you better say, I am, I am forgiven. forgiven. And keep your head high. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory. I just want you to walk in the victory of forgiveness. Yes. Now, they use goats and lamb and bulls and everything else in the Leviticus. But it was to really show you the mercy and atonement of God. Yes. So I want you to go with me to Hebrews so we can get it straight. Come on, sir. You know? Yeah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> this is very important for us in our church because I feel like we're constantly giving guilt, guilt offerings in our community. We're constantly blaming people. We're constantly looking for excuses. We constantly are unforgiving. Hallelujah. But today I want you to know the victory is in forgiveness. Yes, the victory is in mercy. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I had, I had an opportunity where was a man who did something to one of my children. And they didn't tell me about it for many years. And one day I had to pull over on the side of the road when they told me. And all I could do was cry. Mm -hmm. my Lord. And before I could get across that bridge and get home, I had forgiven. Thank you, Lord. I didn't want to, mm -hmm. but I did. Yes, sir. And I'm grateful to God that I did. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let a bitter root into my heart. The Bible clearly says, if somebody goes against you or, or hurts you, you are to forgive them. How many times? Seventy times seven. Forgiveness is just a principle that he has. And none of us in here has not sinned. Not one. And according to First John, if you say you haven't sinned, you are a liar. My Lord. My Lord. Today, though, why would we even want to say and lie about sin? Ask God to forgive you. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, look, in Hebrews chapter 9, y'all with me? Okay. If you, don't leave, if you leave here today and you're not ready for communion next Sunday, I messed up. We got communion next Sunday. You better be ready to receive. Because you all feel forgiven. That's right. Don't look at me like, oh, I can't take this. I, I, I didn't confess my sins. Well, this is your day right here. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, look, uh, <clears throat> that means you have to come next Sunday. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 9. Yes, sir. Bear with me, guys. I have two Bibles up here today. For some reason, I studied out of the public, so I said, I better make them both with Look, go down with me to verse 11. <clears throat> Listen. When Christ, you see it, yes. came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made. You know, the one that they had in the wilderness was man-made, but the mercy seat was. But Christ didn't come through that. He came through heaven itself. Which is the tabernacle. That is not man-made. That is to say, not a part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but entered through the most holy place once for all, by what? By his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean, sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse your consciousness, your consciousness from acts that lead to death, 
so that we may serve the living God. Yeah. Listen to what he's saying. How much more the blood of Jesus can cleanse your consciousness of guilt? How much more? Is there power in the blood or not? How much more than with the blood of Christ through the eternal spirit uh, help you uh, to be feel like God has cleansed you clean? Uh, your whole consciousness is clean. See, if you still think you are that kind of person that God delivered you from and, 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 and redeemed you by his blood, if you still think your sins are not forgiven, your conscience is not clear. Come on, sir. See, the power of the blood and forgiveness is to clean your conscience. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to have a clean conscience. You know, one scripture says, white as snow. I, I, for the sake of Mr. Taylor, I just say clear. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> See through. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen, I want you to understand what I'm trying to say. You have to get yourself to a point where your conscience is what? Clean. Clean. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say that's power in the blood of Jesus. He didn't have a tabernacle that was handmade. He didn't have a tabernacle Moses made in the wilderness. He didn't have a mercy seat like he had in the tabernacle in the wilderness. No, he came from a tabernacle that you could not see. He came from heaven. And he himself is the sacrifice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't need a bull or a goat or a lamb. You need Jesus. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, so he paid the price for me. He paid the price for me. Hallelujah. There is no more guilt and no more shame for the sins that you have confessed to Almighty God. Hallelujah. 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 The only thing you owe anybody is love. Yes, sir. That child that keeps reminding you of what you did, when you did, and how you hurt it, you need to say the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. What you used to be, you remember you were that other. The blood of Jesus. You need to know you've been forgiven. Yes, sir. If you don't walk in it, ain't nobody going to walk for you. You got to know what forgiveness is. Yes, sir. I've been forgiven. Hallelujah. Over here in, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming. Yes, sir. There you go. You broke the law. You say, that's only a shadow of the good things that are coming. Hallelujah. Yes. Not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly, year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. Draw near to God, people. Yes, sir. God will make you perfect. Yes, sir. Yes. If it could, they 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 not have would would they not have stopped being offered? For the worshippers would have been cleansed once for all, and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. See, if you're still feeling guilty, you don't understand the power of the blood. Hallelujah. If you still feel guilty, you don't understand the power of the blood. If people keep blaming you and you still feeling guilty, you don't understand the power of the blood. If you keep remembering that bad thing you did, I'm going to tell you, you don't understand the power of the blood. You must get rid of that whole consciousness of sin. So that you can serve God. Say, why do I need to get rid of the consciousness of sin? So I can serve the living God. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. 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 They say, cleanse once for all. The bulls couldn't do that, could they? But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins. Because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Now read this. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering... You did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings, you were not pleased. In other words, God wasn't pleased with those sacrifices. And Jesus said, here I am. Come on, sir. Those sacrifices had to be done all the time, continuously. Because if you do it last year, then this year you're guilty again. And, you, and, you, and your consciousness is guilty again. But we need a, a power, a sacrifice that will redeem you and get rid of that guilty conscience for good. For good. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the Lord wants to use you. Hallelujah. Yes. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings, you were not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. 